When a bloke has been reported a record 25 times, it's certain that he's going to be remembered more for his indiscretions than for his exploits. Sadly, that's the story of David Reese jones an exquisitely talented player who won a Norm Smith medal. Welcome, Reese. Welcome, yeah. Thank God I won that Norm Smith. Well, it, does, it, does it ever trouble you that your reputation, and in your own terms, that you're a member of the Hall of Shame rather than the Hall of Fame? <laughs> no, not really. I mean, look, that's, you, you live by what you do out, out in the football field or, or in life in general. So, you know, I made some mistakes out there and, um, and uh, yeah, you probably suffer for down the track, but it doesn't, it's not a worry. I mean, things wouldn't change too much. Lots of people say that you started too many fights for a bloke who couldn't really fight. Is that a fair assessment or not? Yeah, I didn't take a backwards step, but uh, I don't know. I could hold my hands up. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll get to that later on. I want to go back to the start of this fascinating journey. You started South Melbourne as a 17-year-old, played your first game yep. in round six against Melbourne. Started on the bench? Yeah, yeah, yeah. come on at half-time. Yeah. So... Finished with? you know how many possessions you had that day? No, I remember kicking a couple of goals mm -hmm. in the last quarter and we won the game, so... Uh... You had 19. That's not bad. 19 and a half a game of footy. Yeah. yeah, I didn't have an opponent, and I, I, well, I think Jared Healy may have been my direct Jared opponent. Jared Healy, but, uh, I'll remind but, but, you of yeah, that. But, but uh, Ron Barassi was coaching. I don't think there was any respect shown to a young skinny yeah. kid out there on the wing. But uh, it was good of, enough. We won the game. It was good. One of your supporters was quite impressed with your start, wasn't he? Yeah, well, I was quite happy. I mean, I walked into the rooms after the game and. And a bloke walked up and he, he said, that was fantastic. And uh, he shook my hand and uh, when he pulled his hand away, there's a $50 note in it. And I'm <laughs> thinking to myself, how good is this? This is <laughs> unbelievable. How many packets of Winfield Blues could you get with 50 bucks then? <laughs> Probably uh, quite a few, I reckon. And, uh... Did you give yourself every chance of being as good as you, as you could have been? I mean, we, we joke about the grog and the fags. I know there was a different culture at that time. But do you think you gave yourself... Uh, the opportunity to be as good as you might have been? Well, we did. We yeah. did back in those days. You know, I mean, uh, it wasn't performance enhancing, which is the buzzword <laughs> at the moment. It, yeah. You know, it was the opposite. I yeah. mean, it was, um, you know, drinking and smoking. And yeah. uh, that was part and parcel of football. And, and, and look, to be perfectly honest, it was a great life. On and off the field, it was a terrific life we had. And, uh, and you wouldn't swap it for quids. All right, let me take you to the Waverley Car Park, 1988 Grand uh, Preliminary Final Day. You pull up in your car alongside Gary Lyon, who's playing for Melbourne against Carlton that day. Mm -hmm. You're uh, chuffing away on a fag. Gary Lyon says, I know how I'm going to play on this bloke today. I'm going to just run him until he falls over. It must have been a huge disadvantage for someone. You would have oh. probably come off 10 or 12 cigarettes at that point, would you? <laughs> well, I don't know how many I had before the game, but I, I normally have my last one about 20 minutes before I run out, and um, <laughs> and I have one as soon as I got off the ground. But uh, And I'm off them now anyway. Yeah, so good boy, one, well one done. Good thing, we were going to get uh, to that, yeah. But look, I mean, I had blokes like Craig Stasevich, who, you know, every time I played on Stars, he'd, uh, he'd be saying, how many smokes you had this week? And, I'll, you know, I'll, look, I just said to him, look, you can run, but you can't hide out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so you get him in the third or fourth. Well, you catch him eventually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, the Norm Smith medal, I mean, you, it enshrines you in footy history. 1987 grand final. Uh, Carlton's playing Hawthorne. You go to centre half back and play on the great Dermot Brereton. Now, we'd only known you as a winger to that point. What was the background to that? Oh, you'd have to ask Wolsey that question. That was a, a move that he decided. I'd played a bit, of, bit on the back line uh, that year and, and did okay. But I, look, I, it was a surprise to me. I saw it on the Thursday night. You walk into the, the players' room and, mm. and you see it up on the board and picked a centre half back. And I thought, well, you know, great. That's a, a great challenge. And uh, my role that day was to make sure Dermot had very little influence on the game. And. Uh, and look, I, I had some wonderful guys back there. I mean, I had Tommy Alvin and, and Peter Dean and Soss and Mick Kennedy and Ian Aiken, I think. That, mm. was, a, that was our back line. And, uh, and they'd cover a lot for me. I wasn't the tightest uh, backman <laughs> out there. The Norm Smith came uh, 12 months after you played in your normal familiar role on a wing on Gary Ayres in the previous yeah. year's grand final. And he won the Norm Smith. Yeah, that's right. I, I had a pretty good second semi and probably one of the better games I'd played over my career. And... Uh, and I, yeah, and, and because of that, I, I you know, I, they, they threw Airsy onto me, and uh, and I, I thought that would work in my favour, but it was just one of those days where Hawthorne were a bit all over us, and uh, you know, the ball didn't sort of bounce the right way, and Airsy won the Norm Smith, and so you know, Monday at the um, 
What was Monday. your nickname Monday? <laughs> well, they, on, on the Monday, Mad Monday, uh, I was called Smithy. So. Mad Mondays, Rhys, were they as mad as we've been led to believe? Were, were you blokes out of control or was it just a, like a long, extended bout of drinking? Uh, no, we were pretty well out of control and mm. done some stupid things. I mean, we... Um, yeah, I mean, it was just a day. We, we, we just took over the pub and whichever pub we happened to be in, um, look out. Did they, sh <laughs> Did they close the pub off? to the rest of us on those days? I mean, would you have exclusive use of whichever pub you decided to wreck? I don't think anyone would want to come in. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't take long, you know, it, was, it got pretty messy at times, yeah. but uh, nah, it was part and parcel of footy back then. The 87 grand final was pretty hot, wasn't it? Oh, it was a stinker. More ways yeah. than one, yeah. yeah no, well, it, it was wasn't. that hot that Michael Tuck wore short sleeves, didn't he? Yeah, it? and yeah. That's, that just about says it all. But <laughs> yeah. I remember at one stage looking up into the crowd and it was a, are, it was a cricket crowd. Here's the, probably your proudest moment of your footy career. Well, that's it. That's what you play footy for. It's to uh, carry that cup around at the end of the day. And it uh, takes a lot of hard work, but uh, we're lucky enough to get there. Your career was divided between South Melbourne slash Sydney and, and Carlton. What are your memories of the, the time at South? Oh, I loved it, yeah. I, I was grateful, you know, for the opportunity that, that, I, that I was given there. And um, I was one of the first players to move up to Sydney. I was right behind that move and uh, looking forward to it. And it was unfortunate the, the VFL weren't as supportive mm. like they are now with the expansion teams. Um, given, I mean, we got promised the world and given an atlas, basically. So that was, uh, it was um, tough days. But I think if you look back on those days when the Swans played on those Sundays up in Sydney, um, we won a few matches uh, and beat some, you know, we mm. had some big scalps in those Massive days. Massive TV audience, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. And, 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 and even when you come back to Melbourne, it was, um, you know, people would say, oh, Barry for Collingwood, but the Swans are my second yeah, team. Yeah, I yeah, love watching yeah. them and uh, love watching you guys on, on, on a Sunday. So it was, yeah, we created a bit of our own. Why did you come back? Well, basically, they, they sacked some of the administration. Greg Miller, who you mentioned before, mm. and Dean Moore, and a few others, um, they sacked them and, and put um, some VFL cronies in there. And, and, and the first thing they, they said then, I was in the second year of a three-year three contract, was that anyone who was getting a pay rise um, any more than they got the year before weren't going to be getting it for the next year. So um, I had a quick chat to them, and, and they said it's right across the board. Um, no one will be getting a pay rise. They'll be on the same rate as they are in 1984. So it's time for me to move on. Do you remember what the numbers were in that contract? I think it was around about 70 a year. So I, I was going from, um, yeah, about 30 to 70. 30 to 70? Yeah. Wow. Which which did happen. I mean, if you, if you leave a club, it's you're going to get paid increase, more. a good pay increase, Reese. Well, it was. Well, I would yeah. have stayed at the Swans for 40. And that yeah. was the silly thing about it. Yeah. I was going up $10,000 and... Uh, and they weren't going to pay it. They weren't so, going to pay it. Yeah. Wow. What weight were you when you started playing? I was ten, about 10 and a half stones. So <laughs> I think that, that, wow. that relates to about 62, 63 yeah. kilos these days, around that. Tell me your mindset when you came into VFL football. Were you, I suspect you were a wild kid, were you? Not really. No, no, no I wasn't a wild kid at all. You I, I just. Look, I think Lou Richards coined it the best, and um, when he, well, a couple of things Lou said. He, he, he said I had white line fever, and mm. you know, a different person must have crossed a, cross a white, white line. But he also said, when Reese Jones gets to the football ground, he puts his head in the locker and <laughs> takes a pumpkin out and puts it on. And I reckon that's a bit more accurate. <laughs> but you did get into a lot of skirmishes, shall we say, didn't you? Yeah. Look, in, in round eighteen eighty one. I think I got reported five times in the one match, and um, and uh, you know I, I gathered a bit of a reputation from that game, and I missed the last four games of that season. I actually got four weeks for hitting the runner. Who, yeah, um, I mean, yeah, was yeah, that against yeah. Richmond? Against Melbourne. Yeah. Against Melbourne. Yeah, yeah. happened yeah. to be Norm Smith's son too. Yeah. So. Peter ironically, Smith. Yeah, yeah, ironically, yeah. but uh, yeah, one of those things. What was the lead up to that? I mean, that's the, uh, five times in one game, so. Uh, Keep yeah, busy, I, I, I'd had a real good first quarter and um, I don't know what was said at quarter time to the Melbourne boys or whatever, but uh, Brent Croswell was pretty intent. In, in, he knew you in, in the take, head, did yeah, he? Yeah, he knew me in the head. And, uh, Do you think he might have meant that, Reese, or not? Oh, definitely. He changed yeah. direction to make sure he got me. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, look, it was one of those things. And, uh, and uh, yeah, there were a couple of All In Blues after that. Crackers Coonan was involved and, yep. and a few other... Do you think they tried to work you over because you were a kid and you were just you might have been able to be intimidated? 
Oh, I don't know what their intention was, but uh, I think the intention was to take me out of the game at, yeah. at that stage. But uh, yeah, it was. Um, it sort of degenerated the match a bit after that, and uh, <laughs> yeah, so I got in a bit of trouble. But but, but the repercussions of that were from other teams and coaches was that I could be sucked in easily. Yep, yep. So um, that's him, blokes. So they'd be standing on your toes, pinching you. You know, I mean, it drove you mad after mm. a while. And do you think? That, did you think the umpires victimised you? Now I asked that question because you were reported twenty five times. Your suspensions, though, total only twenty two matches. So obviously, the people at the tribunal were more sympathetic to David Rees Jones than the umpires were. Well, a lot of times you'd go into the tribunal and and. And the tribunal members would see that you've been whacked first and you're retaliating sort of thing. And so they'd ask the question of the umpire, well, why didn't you report him first? And then, you know, why are they both up here? So there was a little bit of sympathy out there. And, uh, you know, they used to dress me up a bit. You like put that a, altar boy face the, on, The yeah. choir boy sort of look, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. One of the blokes who uh, was reported for hitting you, Reese, was a bloke called Andrew Dimitriou. Do you remember that incident? I don't really remember it, but I remember getting him off and uh, look I helped a lot of them get off yeah. even um, you well, know, you're well practiced at it yeah. well yeah I, there were a couple of times I'd, I'd walk into the tribunal and have to remember which side of the table to sit on <laughs> whether I was a guilty or innocent you party know you were, yeah you were the guilty well you were the charge party 22 times or 25, 25 and, and you were the victim 17, 17. Yeah. yeah so I didn't plan going out on Monday nights <laughs> <laughs> you're a badge of honour for uh, Andrew Demetriou I mean because in his own words he was an outside player but when, he's, when history says that he whacked uh, the legendary David Rhys Jones, I think he's pretty proud of that. I'm, but, pr I'm pretty sure I got him before that, so <laughs> well, it would have been a pain. Well, he did say to me, he said that you both lied at the tribunal. Well, that's what you did. You know, mm. that's what you did in those days. And, uh, you know, I always tried to protect the bloke because uh, you never knew, knew when it might come back to haunt yeah. you. Now, you say you always tried to protect the bloke that hit you. Yeah. I want to remind you of a, an old uh, foe of yours and later teammate, Greg Williams. Did you lie to try to protect him? Uh, no, I don't think I lied that time. No. That, was, that was, must have been the low point of your career, the, the, uh, the exchange, you and Diesel, up at Sydney. Yep. Um, uh, let's, just, let's just remind you of what happened that day, Reese. There's number two for the Swans, yep. G. Williams, coming in with a big right hand that didn't travel all that far but landed on your jaw, right, and broke it. Yeah, broke in two places, mm. and um, I continued to play on. And uh, well, yeah. why did you do that? Was that just that code that you, if you're on the footy field, knowing unless you were carted off unconscious, you stayed there? Is that right? Oh no, I knew I was going to miss about seven or eight weeks, and yeah. I was going to make sure he missed about the same. So, but had you not hit him first? Look, he had a look. Put it this way: he, he had a bung shoulder before the game, and yeah. my jaw was intact. <laughs> <laughs> well, he finished with a bunger shoulder, didn't he? Yeah, he did, but um, look, there was an all-in blue, and, and Diesel, look, and, and, and people often say, you know, um, you know the, the controversy about that. The, the, the thing that disappointed me with uh, Greg Williams, who was a great footballer, is that he'd snipe, but when it comes to a one-on-one, -on -one, he wasn't too keen, and he winched and moaned really? up guys. So, yeah, that was the only thing. It was, uh, you know, if you want to dish it out, you've got to go one-on-one -on -one at times. But I'm sure, look, he was very good with his hands, Diesel, wasn't he, in more ways than one. So he didn't My need... jaw felt that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, now, that day, Diesel sat in that very chair a couple of years ago and recounted that story and said that he, w he went to full forward, I think, after, yeah. after he hit you. Yep. And he saw you wobbling your way down the ground into his vicinity. Yep. And I went looking for him. Yeah, yeah exactly. And he sort of said to himself, Reese, don't do this. And he hit you again, didn't he? No, we were all blind. I actually got reported for hitting him after that. But I, and so I was you've a little gone bit there looking wary. for trouble with a broken jaw. Oh, yeah, yeah, I went looking for him. And uh, the, the siren blew pretty quickly. And I, um, yeah, I got, they reported me. And, uh, and I. I Basically went into the huddle. Jezza was um, had a bit of a go at me for um, you know being yeah, undisciplined and yeah. so forth. But uh, um, yeah, I, I played the second quarter. I, I was and, and it's probably just as well Greg didn't come out in the second quarter because I would have done something stupid. Mm. I, you know, it was probably the only premeditated time premeditated that I would have uh, done something like well, had had you make another bloke miss eight games, it's got to be pretty severe, doesn't it? Yeah, so you would have tried to do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whichever way, yeah. Did you have any bad blood, was there any bad blood between you two before that game? 
Oh yeah, look, he 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 sniped a few of our players uh, along the way. So and and that was you know um, in the back of my thoughts. It, it all started with a, I think Terry Thrip hit. Peter Dean behind the play, and, mm. and back in those days, you know, it was an all-in blue sort yep. of blokes coming from all directions, and uh, and that's when I, you know, was watching where Williams was because he he, he was dangerous out there. And, and he, did you he watch him? Bikes. Oh yeah, I, that's why I, I bulldogged him into the ground, and uh, yeah, and that's he when he shoulder, that's he when he cracked his shoulder. His shoulder. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as fate would have it, Rhys, um, when Diesel leaves Sydney, he joins you at Carlton. It's going to be hard to get him now, isn't it? <laughs> But was it frosty? I mean, did you welcome him to Princess Park or did you have anything to do with him there? Oh, bits and pieces. Um, Diesel was his own man and, and we didn't, yeah, we, we were different people. Did you speak? Yeah. Not as mates or anything, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Just in, in the interest of the team. Yeah. yeah. He was a great player, Diesel, wasn't he? He was. Can you certainly put, was. Can you put the personal things to one side and sort of acknowledge just... Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, yeah. there's no doubt. You know, he, he, he was... Um, you know, limited athletically, I suppose, in, in, in a lot of ways. So he, he, he by far got the most out of himself and, and you know, was, was terrific football. Mm. I mean, there's no question about that. The other side, that's my opinion. Yeah, OK, OK. Now, we're not going to focus entirely on the blues that happened on the footy field, but the other famous one, I think, was the Dennis Banks, uh, Reese Jones uh, incident at, yep. at the MCG. Again, if your memory's fading, mate, let's have another look at that. <laughs> Get a headache every time I see it. <laughs> now that's a big hit. Yep. That's probably I reckon that's eight to ten weeks today. Yeah. I woke up in the room, so I was I was out cold then and there. Um, what now, is there a background to that? Well, I think if you look closely, you'll see that Dennis's eye is uh, split open. So, <laughs> <laughs> who did that? Un Reece? Unfortunately, I, I collected him a little bit earlier than that, and uh, with intent or accidentally? Oh, accidentally on purpose. Why did you get yourself into so many scraps? I mean, you, the, both these you you whacked Diesel on his crook shoulder, and you've smacked Banksy and opened up his eye. I mean, did you ever think that you might have been fighting out of your division a bit? I mean, they were pretty good with their fists, <laughs> weren't they? Yeah, well, they both sneak at me too, so... <laughs> Although Banksy reckons he still owes me another one, but... Uh... No, I think he squared... Whatever he owed you, I think he squared oh, up Oh, that, was, that, that was well squared up. But they, Actually, that, look, that was... Um, you know, you, got, you mentioned eight to ten weeks, so you got three weeks for that. And three? So, so sometimes it depends on who you hit. Wow. Now, you were asleep when that... After Banksy uh, whacked you. Mm. I was at the MCG just 20 metres uh, outside the fence, and there's a woman... Uh, of my acquaintance ran down the aisleway to the fence and to all intents and purposes was going to jump it to take on Banksy. <laughs> you were married to her at the time. Oh, OK. She might have been wishing I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> that's a true story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, look, it was, um, you know, and that's the thing. If you, if you <laughs> play with fire, you get burned every yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming up, the Battle of Britain. Your history is a contradiction. I mean, you were a beautifully skilled player. I mean, you were like a cat. Your balance was perfect. You didn't look to be going all that quickly, but no one seemed to be able to grab you. Oh, I just think sometimes that your skills are undersold and your achievements, in the purest sense, don't get the credit they deserve. Oh, no, I think, uh, you know, I think people realise, and, and when you talk about that, I wasn't quick, so uh, that's no. why I didn't look like I was going quick, but I had a pretty good um, knowledge of what was around me, and... and it was hard enough to get the ball without wasting it, so mm. I think that's, you know, a lot of players go 100 miles an hour and uh, yeah, their body's going 100 miles an hour, but their mind's going one mile an yeah. hour and the ball can go straight up in the air, so. Two weeks after the 87 Premiership win, the pinnacle of your footy career, you play a game offshore in London, which later was titled the Battle of Britain. What are your memories of that? Well, not too good. I mean, I've, I've had to watch it on YouTube and, and, and things, but... We, we'd just won a premiership yep. and we'd been on the drink basically for two weeks and, and, and there were a lot of celebrations, Melbourne Town Hall thing and, and uh, you know, there's something happening basically every day and, uh, and next minute we're on a plane off to, uh, uh, to London, London to yeah. play North Melbourne. So it was, um, we were there to have a good time. They were there to play for Tell me about your f preparation the night before the game, Reese. Did you into bed early, were you? <laughs> Well, it was early, early in the morning. It was about, <laughs> about 4 a.m., I think, when I yeah. got to bed the morning of the match. So, uh, yeah, look. It, when did the alarm bells ring that North Melbourne 
had come to play. I think when Stephen McCann, who wasn't the bravest bloke out there, tried to put uh, <laughs> Steve Stephen Kernahan. Kernahan's head in a garbage bin, I thought, <laughs> they're fair dinkum, those blokes. <laughs> they're on here. Well, let's have a look, mate. Let's go back to London. There's your massive Well, that, wasn't, that wasn't bad considering the amount of sleep I'd had. So, oh. uh, yeah, and that was um, oh. Donald and... <laughs> Bang. That was lively. That was interesting. And no jumper punches there. They no, were, they were no, no well, that was, yeah, I mean, what a headache as it was from the night before. I didn't know Donald back then. Donald Because <laughs> yeah. yeah, he didn't mind a stouse, did he? No, he enjoyed it. Yeah. He, he'd pick his mark, so. Yeah. So, uh, so we know the downs, the black mark from that game was Ian Aitken having his jaw broken. But was, I asked you before about being scared on a footy field. Was that scary that day? With the spot fires all over the, the ground? Scary for Alistair Clarkson. Yeah. It was yeah. probably the only time um, I'd been given instructions to get someone. Yeah. And, and, and Wolsey, you know, later that, he, he basically said, I don't want this bloke to walk off the ground. So, mm. Did he say that to everyone or just to his henchmen like you well, and Jimmy Buckley? Yeah, he, well, I think he knew he was going to try and carry it out anyway. But mm. um, that was, yeah, that, and it, it became farcical after a while. We, we were chasing him and weren't even worried about the footy. Mm. And, and with the goal umpire chasing us, it was like Benny Hill at times <laughs> running around in circles. But <laughs> was, was Bugsy Common your goal umpire that game? Yeah, he was. Yeah, good goal umpire. He would have Only been. had to go near the post and he'd give it a goal. I want to quote you something from your book, Reese, which was titled Reese. Uh, it came in about 10 years ago. Yeah. You did say, and there's a couple of things I want to quote you from that book. One of them was in, uh, that you copped a lot more than you ever dished out. Did you mean that literally? You're on the receiving oh, end, more, yeah. Physically, yeah, I yeah. copped a lot better ones than I ever dished out. Mm. No, you know, I, I, I never intended to hurt anyone, I suppose. It was, um, you know, niggling little stuff or, or, or retaliation or, or whatever. So mm. it was, you know, just part of the way my game went. Mm. Okay. The other thing you said in your book was that uh, uh, this is a direct quote. There was no doubt the use of anabolic steroids was rife in the 1980s. Have you backed down from that, or do you still stand by that? Oh, that quite sounds a bit strong, but look, there, there was rumours. There was yeah. definite rumours around that... But um, you did say, now, we're not, I'm not going to be pedantic with it, but yeah. you did say there was no doubt the use of anabolic steroids was rife in the 80s, which, which to me says you are declaring that steroids were being used by clubs. Put it this way, I'd be very surprised if they weren't. OK. You did name two clubs that were the basis of your suspicions are Fitzroy and West Coast? Fitzroy, yeah, in the, in the mid-80s. They had a lot of blokes who got very big, very quick. Mm. And, uh, and um, I don't know, I did a lot of weights and I didn't get very big. No. So <laughs> it didn't, didn't help me. No, I must say, in I, I, I was uh, in the media at the time and um, was aware of these suggestions and mm. certainly some strong suggestions about the rapid development of players at the West Coast. Yeah. Uh, look, that was, you know... What, what happened there? Yeah. I'm not too sure. You, and, and it's funny because uh, you think something would have come out by now, mm. but it hasn't, and, and, the, and the truth normally comes out. So maybe, maybe they did have some ingenious um, weight program <laughs> that I didn't called. know. Peptides, yeah. <laughs> Who was the toughest bloke you played on? Or the toughest bloke to beat? Gee, it was tough. You know, I started off, as you said, on a wing, and uh, guys like Wayne Schimmelbush who just pushed himself mm. all day were... Really hard to play on, you know. Just uh, w their work rate was was unbelievable, and a lot of those guys who played in the wing were, were very, very fit guys. And Gary Ablett. Um, did you play? Did you play on Gary? Yeah, I played on Gary yeah. a couple of times, and I was lucky enough to get out on the skates. So. Did you enjoy the show? And you played okay on him, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah I played him a couple of times, and uh, that's what you try and do: put yeah. yourself up against the best and, mm. and see how you go. I mean, and and he was good. Oh, go on, was he? Yeah. <laughs> was there a way to play him? I mean, did you? employ a particular strategy because it was him? I played it on him from behind uh, a lot of the time, which people would say, you're, you're crazy, but um, I suppose a little bit of reputation and a little bit of footsteps, and especially with other players saying that, you know, they're going to get him and, and, and whatever over the course of that day. It was, it was at Waverley, and a lot of times, um, you know, he, he fumbled a few. Did he? Hmm. Which was uncharacteristic. Yeah, yeah. Why would he have fumbled, Reese? do you think? Oh, look, I, I just think the the, the, the players and, and, and the... Is that because of this in, this intimidation? Yeah, 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 that, yeah. you know, he yeah. was going to cop it over the cop course of that day. And, 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 and I played on him one other time, and I must admit, I thought, you know, it might be good to get in his ear before, you know, 
during a game we played at, at Princess Park and, and he was so quick off the mark mm. and, and a couple of times he led and, and um, I thought I'll mention that he, you know, he had 10 or 15 on me that time. Why aren't they kicking the ball to me? And, and you know, <laughs> kicking the ball to you. And, and so, uh, yeah, I started putting a few ideas in his head thinking if I can uh, get him thinking and get his mind off football, then uh, probably the best way to do it. One last one. Uh, the funniest moment in your uh, tribunal history. Is there one? It wasn't real funny in there. No, well, there's, there's some Look, you... after, after, after the uh, Battle of Britain, we actually, uh, we are the tribunal, I think there was um, five or six Carlton players and probably four or five North Melbourne players. And, and, and we'd been out to lunch that day, Jimmy Buckley and Wayne Johnson and myself, and we'd all been... This recorded. is back here, back in... Back, yeah. back in Melbourne, yeah. yeah. And, um, and Ian Collins and Ron Joseph were in there arguing the case, so we actually sent out for a box of crownies and, <laughs> um, and, and, and sat in the tribunal room and, and polished off a box of crownies. And, um, <laughs> and before we got in there, it was two hours they were arguing for, so... Um, How many were in the box of crownies? 24. 24. So I think there's about box, yeah. there's three of us having a good crack, and, uh, <laughs> That's and, a good and, crack. and a few others just having one or two. Mm, nice work. Hey, Reese, I, I did genuinely love watching you play. I mean, I saw you come in because you came in with a fan for at South, and it was you know this kid was going to go a long way, and you did lots of highlights. And uh, hopefully today we've squared the ledger a bit between Reese the hit merchant and Reese the footballer, and the footballer was very very good. There was never a dull moment, Mike. There was a mate. Good to see you, mate. Thanks.